especially when you take into consideration the continuous war against the Ukrainian people by Putin, the terrible fires that have ravaged parts of Greece and California and indeed many other places. Not to mention the thousands of people fleeing their countries because of conflict or indeed because of oppression. In Romans chapter 5 we read that we can glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And then with perseverance we build character. And with character we embrace hope. Hope does not put us to shame. Hope is essential. We are told then from this God's love is poured into our hearts and this happens through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been given to us, I suppose, in the way of a gift. So in many ways we are told to see that our suffering can lead to this, to hope and to living in the Holy Spirit. There is a view, however, that we are somewhat incapable to cope with life's slings and arrows of misfortune. As previous generations could manage the trials and tribulations of life. At least this is what we are told. I was told the same by my mum and dad, but that was a long time ago. And now I'm probably repeating what they said to people who are younger than me now, which wouldn't be too difficult. I remember one gentleman saying to me, how in God's name could we ever have a Normandy landing now? They'd all be seasick in the boats. <laughs> and we couldn't even get the catering right for them. But hey, that's another story. I saw a website called Psych Central. And the heading of an article on this website was, it hurts to live. It hurts to live. So just living is pain. Now I can understand that at the moment because with my head cold, there's nobody in this world suffering as much as me. But people tell me that's a man thing. I say no it's not. I know that because I know how much I'm suffering. And it was also going on about it hurts to live because we're finding it hard to cope with emotional pain. And emotional pain is, to a large extent, life. Maybe you feel that life itself is too painful. Or you question why you are here and whether you can handle the very existence that has you here. Now this article that I read suggests that it's not a natural response to many of our life's events. If you're having a difficult time right now, it may be a good idea to seek the support of a mental health professional. And that is, of course, acceptable. And maybe this can help you manage and overcome your emotional pain. And there's plenty of evidence, of course, to suggest that. But are we wise in thinking or attempting to remove all pain, emotional pain? To remove all pain out of our system completely? Is it just old fashioned to believe? that you should at times confront your pain, maybe live through your pain, maybe suffer your pain, or is that 
reckless thinking. Some would believe that maybe we should own our own pain. Now, I would never suggest to anyone that they should let emotional pain take a grip, a total grip on their lives. That would be unwise. But at times, I believe it is important to confront what we call our demons, however we perceive them to be, that we should face them, confront them. You know, anxiety isn't always our only a medical condition. Indeed, many have argued that anxiety is a normal condition, even essential, part of being human, to be anxious and to suffer from anxiety. Some believe that anxiety can be transformative. It can make you breathe and taste life even more, even, in, even allowing us to lead and live more meaningful lives giving us a better and richer understanding of ourselves. Can you imagine, can you imagine the heartbeat of an athlete just about to compete? Anyone who watched World Athletics over the last few days on television, I was even anxious watching it and how they came out and ran, and the beauty of them running, and the anxiety they must have suffered before they ran. Can you imagine what it's like to take a shot in a penalty kicker and miss it, and lose it? The World Cup. The Danish philosopher Kierkegaard argued that anxiety is part of human nature. Anxiety arises where possibility and actuality come into contact and the present touches the future. That to me is profoundly brilliant, where the present touches the future can make you anxious, and that's where anxiety runs. Indeed, some level of anxiety can help us deal with dangerous situations, make us turn away from danger. However, on the other hand, if someone is continually anxious about the most modest things of their daily life, then there is a problem then you are talking about anxiety disorder and that person needs comforting and help. Now some people might believe, I've got the answer to this, to anxiety. I've got the answer to stress. I've got the answer to life itself being pain and living hurts, all of that. And the answer is, you've guessed it, or maybe you haven't guessed it, is religion. But a lot of people would say that couldn't be further from the truth. The problem with religion, or some religious problems, is that they can actually trigger anxiety. And it's an anxiety you could better live without. And it's an anxiety that's not real. It's not about a real danger. It's not about running a race. It's not about a penalty kick. It's like telling someone they're an atrocious sinner and going to hell is not very helpful. If there are religions that tell people that they are sinners and they are going to hell and they believe it, that could make you very anxious. And yet it's about something that's not real. Or I remember as a little kid, 
I was told, if you eat meat on a Friday as a child, the fires of hell await you. And yet, I couldn't resist a burger in a new burger parlor that had opened in Dunleary. So this burger was more desirable than eternity in hell. But I was anxious when I was eating that. I still remember that burger. However, a review showed that in most studies, religion, religious training, but in particular people with spirituality, people of faith, people of prayer, and church-based social life, church-based social support, were associated with reduced anxiety or stress levels. So less of the hell, less of the eternal damnation, and more of the coffee. And that will make religion far more acceptable. Now this was carried out by an organisation called ClinMed. And it appeared in their recent journal, the International Journal of Depression and Anxiety. Not holiday reading, but worth looking at to learn a little bit about this. And Clint run a, a, a profoundly uh, scholarly library in America, an international library. So they had suggested that in one area, or in many areas, religion in certain practices, being prayerful, feeling a sense of faith, feeling a sense of spiritual life, can reduce or help you deal with anxiety or stress. But I would add to that, but not religion if it torments you. I mean, in the past, in the past, young people have come to this church and have asked to speak to me, not always young people, to tell me in most cases because they were gay, that they were living a life of horror and fear because their church had told them their very existence was sinful, their very sexuality was sinful. And it wasn't easy to comfort those person and to reappear persons and to reassure them. So it weren't. Some left here thinking, no, I can never reconcile my sexuality with my religious belief. Can you imagine how destructive that is to another human being? And that was a classic example of someone going through life, suffering anxiety and stress about something that's not real, that their sexuality is a gift from God, like our very presence is a gift from God. But we are told as Christians to let God take the burdens of our worries, including anxiety. And I remember my, I've mentioned her here many times, my Aunt Molly, who was a Franciscan nun. She used to always say to us, all your burdens, all your problems, just put them on Christ's shoulder. And I kind of felt sorry for Christ. Can you imagine? <laughs> he must be very bent over at that stage. I put a hamburger on the shoulder. But through that, through that sharing a burden, that sense of sharing a burden, drinking coffee with others, chatting with others. Sometimes the anxiety disappears. Sometimes the worry is about nothing. Sometimes it's about very little. Sometimes it's about something big, but it can be shared. And what helps people is support, talk, conversation, and comfort. And as we believe, through the gift of grace, we will become Amen.